Stop using VirtualBox. Use KVN QMU instead. I'm going to teach you how to do that today. Let's just jump right into it. First of all, check if your system can actually do this. We grab for VMX or SVM. It depends on whether you're using AMD or Intel. You see all that data there? If yours returns anything, it means you're good. Uh, if it doesn't return anything, don't panic. It will fall back to software virtualization, which is much slower, but you will still get by, so... You can continue. Now we've got to install some packages. Right, because I'm on Fedora, these are the packages I'm going to install. The main ones are these QMU KVM, libvirt daemon KVM, vert install. Um, but I'm going to install all of these packages here. Install the ones for your correct operating system. Once you've installed the packages, the process is the same no matter what you're using. So, so because Fedora's amazing, I can actually install all these packages together. And I do want all the optional packages, so I just do that. Again, look up what you need to do to install on your distro, the specific packages. Right, now all those are installed. We got to start and enable libvirt D. Libvirt is basically a daemon to manage virtual machines and this is what we're gonna be used to manage our QMU KVM VMs. Little trick here, enable hyphen hyphen there will enable and start a service. So there we go. Now we can check that if that's running. And it is. And now we need to check that all the modules are loaded correctly. So you can do lsmod grep KVM. There we are. Very good. If now install, if you haven't already, the package vert manager. Vert manager, like that. I think I probably already installed it, yes. Start vert manager as root, uh, and then it will connect. So once you've started vert manager, this will open here, be able, and it will have connected to your local QMU KVM instance. Okay, this means that you've installed everything correctly if you've got this file. Great, let's now make a virtual machine. Click this button here, which create a new virtual machine. Um, we want a local install. Okay, you notice here that you'll actually need to download an ISO image. So this is where you pick the distribution, what you want. So before this video, I already went ahead and downloaded Rocky Linux. Uh, you just, just click download here and you want the ISO. Uh, get, get the minimal one or, the, or whatever. The minimal one is generally fine. Once that's done, <coughs> you'll be able to click browse here. You'll have something here called location. This is the default location for where it expects your images to be. And I would now recommend basically moving your image that you just downloaded into whatever this default location is, okay? Just keep it default, it's easier. And now, pick which one you want. I'm gonna use the bigger one because I've got the bigger one, why not? Choose, okay. And you see, this is what we're gonna use. It's automatically detected the operating system, very cool. Next, what do we want here for, so this is our CPU and memory. You see I've got 12 cores and 16 gigs of RAM. Honestly, you can even move this down to one. This is how strong you want your VM to be. I don't really think that virtual machines require too much of anything because we're not going to be doing much of it. It's going to be our like little dev virtual machine. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to up the RAM to 2048. I'll give it two gigs of RAM, but leave it as two CPUs. That's fine. Create a disk for our virtual machine. This is what storage do we want for our VM? I'm just going to create a 20 gig disk. That's fine for me. Next step, naming your VM. I'll call this test rocky like that. And as you see here, it will store it in var libvert images test rocky.qcow2. This is the, the actual VM. This is hard drive effectively. You can customize the configuration if you want, but I don't really want to. I don't want to do that. I'll just leave it as default. Uh, virtual network selection. So by default, you've got NAT, which is fine for now. In the future, we'll probably want to put bridge here, especially if we want to them to act like their own device on our internal network. But for now, you can just port forward into your VM if you need to. Um, but just leave it as NAT for now, because all we want to do is install it and basically make sure everything's working. Uh, and finished. And now it creates a domain, and then it will just start. There we are. Right, okay, so my virtual machine actually kernel panics. That's not good, but that was because my CPU setting was incorrect. Normally, the default is fine, but I have to change mine to... So if you click this little... Uh, Virtual hardware details, you go to CPUs. I actually had to change it to host type and model like that. So normally you get to just choose here. Uh, normally it type by default. Uh, play. And then it will not kernel panic, I hope. Right, so here we are, the VM is booting up. Right, and there you are, now we're at the installer. Um, and now, yeah, just go ahead and install your virtual machines as you want. That's basically how you set up KVM. Super, super easy, and it's already built into the kernel, so you shouldn't be installing more additional software. Use the KVM. Ah, just click French. Subscribe or your virtual machines will forever kernel panic.